this is a demonstration of the long bone mobilization. Uh, so as always, we're always going to make sure we have our VSI precautions to make sure our skin is safe. Uh, for this purpose, or for this skill, we're going to say that our patient here has a uh, forearm fracture here to his right arm. Now, uh, normally I want to manually mobilize his arm before I uh, do anything or check out his PMSCs. Uh, so the patient's already immobilizing the arm to have it up nice and uh, high uh, to make sure it's comfortable for him. So as long as he maintains that, uh, that should be fine. Now before I apply any kind of mobilization device, I want to check to make sure that my patient has uh, adequate PMSCs. So I'm going to check his pulse. I'm going to go ahead and have him wiggle his fingers to check his motor. I'm going to ask him what finger I'm pressing or squeezing to check his sensory. And I'm going to go ahead and check my cap refill. Are those all adequate? Motor sensory and circulatory functions are present and normal. Excellent. Next up, I want to go ahead and measure out uh, my rigid splint, which we're going to use a cardboard splint for this one. Uh, I'm basically trying to make sure that uh, I'm going to mobilize above and below the injury. Uh, so usually we're going to do that from joint to joint. So if it is a forearm fracture, I'm going to mobilize it to the elbow and also towards the wrist. So I already kind of cut it, uh, uh, my rigid splint or my cardboard, I cut it to measure it out already and I also taped it to secure it to make sure it stays there. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make uh, some cushioning for that. So we can just use a trauma dressing and go ahead and place that inside. Uh, to make sure it's going to hold and secure the patient's arm nice and tight, as well as make it nice and comfortable for the patient as much as possible. Now, uh, with the assistance of uh, the patient, I'm going to go ahead and place his arm inside of the splint. There we go. And I also ask my, uh, my patient to hold on to that splint now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and secure the splint. Uh, how I want to do that is I'm going to basically uh, mobilize it uh, once again above and below from joint to joint. Uh, so to secure the splint to the arm, what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it either with gauze. You could use tape and things like that as well, uh, whatever you have available uh, that uh, does the, the job right or correctly. Now the main thing when I'm wrapping this is I don't really want to go over where I believe the fracture site is or where the patient's really reporting pain. Obviously because that's going to cause a lot more pain for the patient if I do that. When I'm applying this dressing, I want it to be snug, but I'm not trying to cut off any circulation or anything like that. Uh, just basically to apply pressure to keep the arm there in place as best as we can. Now, to secure this dressing in place, I can either tape it or I can just go ahead and tie a nice little knot. Uh, either one will work just fine. Now, another key point here uh, with this is I want to make sure that I'm going to uh, splint the extremity in a position of function. So basically what that means is just uh, splinting it so that they can still have function of their distal uh, parts, uh, being the hand in this case. Uh, so if I can have the patient hold on to a roll of gauze or something like that, then make sure that that is uh, going on adequately. Now before I'm all done here, I want to once more, since I mobilized something, I want to recheck his PMSEs. So I'm going to go ahead and recheck his pulse. I want to recheck his motor by having him wiggle his fingers. I'm going to go ahead and recheck his sensory by asking him which finger I'm grabbing. And I'm going to go ahead and check this cap refill one more time, making sure that those are all adequate. And that's all mode mobilization.